Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, Tell Me More, by Kelly Corrigan. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. Tell Me More, 2019, is a meditation on the phrases that allow us to express love and connect with others. Built around a series of intimate personal essays, Kelly Corrigan's study of life's many frustrations and joy cements her critical reputation as a poet laureate of the ordinary. Unflinchingly honest and often downright hilarious, Corrigan's reflections are an endlessly thought-provoking exploration of the meaning of death, friendship, parenthood and, above all, love. Key idea number one, just like this is all we can do when everything goes wrong. Kelly Corrigan broke apart one day. Grief overtook her three months after her father Greeny died of cancer. Everything tasted nasty. Corrigan mornings were routine. As usual, Edward made bacon for Kelly. Her blood pressure rose before she put on her slippers. The phone rang but nobody answered. Edward couldn't hear it, and their 14-year-old Claire and 16-year-old Georgia were arguing in the corridor. Kelly resented having to organize the girls. Edward embraced the let kids fight approach from his lone parenting book, which suited him perfectly. Kelly forgot she loved Easy Ed at this point. Today, she realized he would miss another altercation, leaving her to cope with the aftermath again. Kelly was nearly exploding when everyone left the house. She saw slimy eggshells on the counter and dog fur under the table. Edward was shaved, washed, fed, and ready for work before she even had coffee. His plan to leave her to stew in spite made matters worse. She contemplated what transpired alone. She loved her family more than anything, and she despised the idea of becoming a nagging, self-pitying sourpuss her husband couldn't wait to leave in the morning. Problems? Kelly remembered her meditation teacher's motto, sometimes it's exactly like this. Life stinks, it makes us disoriented and unpleasant. No one actually thinks yelling at the gods can bring a parent back or remove stretch marks. We still fall into Kelly's trap that day. We must accept our situation and withstand the storm. Key idea number two, listening can aid a loved one more than giving advice. Problem solving parents. Kelly has five solutions before Claire or Georgia finish explaining the problem. However, youngsters must start making decisions as they become older. Listening instead of giving replies can assist parents. Heart. Kelly's old college friend and fellow parent Tracy compares it to watching someone work on a puzzle while you have the last piece. Parents want to give their kids the missing piece because they hate seeing them suffer. Georgia called when Tracy and Kelly were driving to a college reunion celebration. Amazing coincidence. Georgia cried to her parents because 6th grade was unjust and everyone lied. Kelly would play devil's advocate. Right Georgia? Tracy helped. She told Kelly to let her daughter finish her story. Georgia complained about Piper, who had frequently been cruel to her but now claimed she began it. Kelly was exasperated, but Tracy told her to just repeat it back to her. Kelly summed, you weren't cruel to Piper, but everyone is upset at you. Georgia affirmed this interpretation. Tracy kept feeding Kelly lines. Kelly said, that must feel unfair rather than discussing this tween melodrama. Georgia calmed down after the call. Tracy's prompts helped Georgia reveal her schoolmate's rejection. Kelly understood. She didn't care about Piper, but she understood rejection and knew Georgia needed her empathy. Key idea number three, faith and reason cannot solve life's puzzles. Kelly's Irish-American parents were raised in 1940s Baltimore's fervent Catholic neighborhood. Faith was simple, her father assured her, the rest just fit. People went to Mass, ate fish on Fridays, and hoped for a recompense in heaven, no doubt. Kelly was different. Religion held society together, but it didn't explain the universe. Kelly found church very sensory. She liked communion, incense, and organ music, the finest location to meet boys. By college, faith had faded. Generational differences were evident when Kelly and her father Greeny were diagnosed with stage 3 cancer. Parents prayed. Kelly and Edward googled. Greeny's bladder cancer was worse than Kelly's breast cancer. Age and lesion location hampered his case. Greeny's doctors advised his family to enjoy his last year, while Kelly's were optimistic. Greeny body surfed at the Jersey Shore after nine months of chemotherapy and radiation. Many called that miraculous. Kelly's parents credited global prayers from Greeny's friends and relatives. Kelly wasn't convinced because she hadn't prayed. After shunning God for so long, she didn't want to pray in this moment. Her logical buddy Tracy disagreed. She said God's incomprehensible glory was nowhere. Human ingenuity and several scientific advancements, including the tiny scope and scissors used to remove nine bladder cancers from Greeny, rescued Kelly's father. Kelly doubts it. Even Greeny's doctor couldn't explain his good health. Science and faith may disagree. We can just shrug and reply, I don't know, like that doctor. Key idea number four, healthy partnerships require no. Kids say no easily. We lose the ability to easily reject ideas or demands as we develop. No seems sluggish, rude, 
nasty, or stingy. The phrase has few positive connotations, but partnerships needed. Kelly realized it in her late 30s. Kelly was a stubborn child. Her mother Mary ordered pizza instead of dozens of pricey hoagie sandwiches for a birthday party. Kelly raged. She said she didn't like cheese, a food she loved, to get her mom's attention. After the ruse failed, she persisted. She went 10 years without cheese. After cancer, she learned to say no. Kelly always wanted four kids by 40. Georgia and Claire came easily, and at 36, she was on schedule to fulfill her goal. Her cancer thwarted it. Chemotherapy often causes infertility. Two years later, an oophorectomy was the only way to remove her ovaries due to a worrying growth. It was devastating. With her disease in remission, she believed adoption or egg and embryo donors might work. Kelly told Edward her strategy. He dashed her aspirations. His expression told her he couldn't grant this wish. He told her he was happy. His wife was healthy again, their kids were doing well, and his work was doing well. He wasn't ready. Kelly cried without fighting him. Why? She then noticed how her cancer had affected her husband. He had to look after himself to support her. Saying no was self-preservation that ensured their marriage. Key idea number five, I was wrong is the only response to mistakes. Hershey, the Corrigan dog, has yet to be introduced. Kelly got her after a friend recommended it for teaching youngsters responsibility. Kelly trained Hershey herself. Hershey's bad behavior is Kelly's trigger, and the program was basic. Why? It reminds her of her disobedience. Hershey's worst habit is toilet drinking. The Corrigans reside in arid California, which makes it even worse. They conserve water whenever possible. This involves flushing their upstairs toilet every other pee. Despite Kelly's continuous reminders, Claire and Georgia often forget to flush after other usage. Dogs coprophagize, unfortunately. That's a zoological phrase from feces and eat. While eating supper, the Corrigans heard dog tags on porcelain. Kelly wailed after rushing upstairs. Let's just say she still has forehead wrinkles from her discovery. Kelly raged, and Georgia, already on parole for a similar infraction the week before, took the brunt of the expletive-filled storm. Kelly left Edward and Claire crying after sending her to the bathroom with a roll of kitchen paper. Rage became horror a mile later. She had modeled the uncontrolled response she constantly decried and lost it in front of her husband and co-parent, not mom of the year. It got worse. When she apologized to Claire for her frightened yelling, her daughter said it was her fault. Her eldest needed a near-perfect apologies. How do you apologize to a wrongfully accused adolescent you had wiped human feces off the toilet floor? Kelly just said I was wrong. Parenthood is a never-ending cycle of mistakes and forgiveness. Key idea number six, good enough works. Kelly and Ariel, a psychotherapist whose daughters attend Claire and Georgia's school, walk through Piedmont, Oakland's mountainous neighborhood, every Tuesday. Kelly attended Ruby's Bat Mitzvah, a Jewish girl's religious initiation. It was memorable. Ruby, 13, calmly recited Hebrew scriptures, related Old Testament stories, and gave a drash, or sermon, to the assembly. She had spent years in Hebrew school, one-on-one -on -one lessons with her rabbi, and a large community effort to get there. Kelly talked to Rabbi Michael after the ceremony. Why did 13-year-olds perform mitzvahs? He said it's a crucial time for young people's physical and mental development. It's also when we leave childhood and enter adulthood's wide oceans. Michael said the ritual empowers youth. It tells kids they're good enough to survive and do good in the world. All faiths need to hear that. Kelly says, she didn't mature until her mid-30s. Before that, she drifted between dead-end jobs while her friends married, purchased houses, and settled down. Greeny guided Kelly for years. Her father reassured her when she doubted herself. Correct. Kelly questioned her father how he knew things would work out once she married Edward, had kids, and became Greeny's ideal daughter. Response? A few wins are plenty. That's it. We start believing in ourselves and our skills when someone we love believes in us even when we goof up. When life overwhelms us, we can turn to knowledge. In difficult circumstances, these phrases provide solace, sanity, and direction. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.